Now today's watercolour tutorial for you is how to paint a cat's eye in detail. And this time it's going to be the beautiful eye of a sand cat. So let's get the brushes wet and let's get started. Now first of all when you draw an eye out or anything which you do for a painting, do it in a very light pencil. I've used a very soft loaded pencil here so that you can see it on the camera. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my putty eraser. This is a Faber-Castell one. But there's a variety of these on the market. Really, really useful. I don't rub with it. What I tend to do is just dab. This will take some of that residual pencil off the paper. So then that's ready to make a start on the painting then. Now what I'd like to start off with is a background washes first of all. Now when you look behind the scenes, you look past all them details, around the side it's more like a, a very dull looking blue, isn't it? And when you look within the reflections, the reflection, the white of the reflection is blue like a bright blue. I might add a little bit of white in there later on as well, we'll see. But I want to see how it goes on there first of all. So, we'll start off, I think, with the bright blue first of all, and that's going to be a little bit, a little bit, of the phthalo blue, or intense blue, and that depends on the colours you're using, depends on the make of the colours you're using as well, because we know that some makes do change the names a little bit, don't they, in places, they really do. Now, if we test that one out, that's going to be something like that there. This is some scrap watercolour paper I've got here. And I think something like that will do. The one that's quite watery, as you can see here. And that's just going to go within the highlighted area. Too much paint on the brush, give it a tap or two. Take some of that paint off. Watch out for any water runs on the metal ferrule there as well. And just take that off. Or that just kind of run and splat straight onto your painting. Which sometimes is not very nice, is it, when that happens? Because... Uh, and there's a big mark on there, especially when you've already got some paint on the paper. And all I'm going to do is fill this area in now. Just using this lovely bright blue. Well, watered down, of course. And we know that comes down, something like a bit of a line like that. Again, it doesn't have to be too neat. And just add that onto the paper. Do the same for the top parts as well. And also vary the consistency of the paint. So a bit more watery in places, so therefore it's duller when it dries. Now when you look at the iris, we can see that it's well, like a very dull blue, isn't it? So we've got to think of how we're going to make that blue colour. So what we need to do, get our scrap testing paper again. Now look at the colours we've got within our half pan selection. Now you may have tube paints instead. So whichever ones you're using, just try not to use too much of it. Because we know watercolour can go a very long way. So let's have a quick look at my colour charts here. Now I've got a little video on how to make these. I'll pop a little link to the top there for you, okay? And this is a good way of kind of comparing this to your reference photograph. Again, it's all within that video. So if you're interested in trying to find out how to make something like this, it's well worth looking into it. Now, I'm looking at the reference photograph, and so far, I think cerulean blue is pretty close to that colour, but it needs to be slightly duller. Okay, so look at the very pale version of the cerulean blue here. And look at the photograph we've got to the side here. See what I mean? It's nearly there, isn't it? Not quite, but nearly there. So that's the closest one I've got. And if I add just a touch, of paint grey to that, that will dullen that cerulean blue down. So if I just put them two side by side to those two there, see what I mean? So I mix those two very pale versions together to get that background colour. So let's get my old mixing brush. So cerulean blue. Some people call it cerulean. I call it cerulean. You tell me what the proper pronunciation of that is. I'd be quite interested to find out. I always make more than you think you'll need. But when you're mixing colours and you run out of that colour, They've got to try and make that exact same mix again, which is not always easy, is it? So cerulean blue, just a touch of Payne's grey. Maybe too much. Give it a test, make sure it's right before you even put it on the paper. See, that's far too dark, isn't it? Far, far too dark. A little bit more cerulean blue in there, I'm going to water that down. Touch more Payne's grey. Quite powerful, that cerulean blue, isn't it? It really is. See my little pipette? A couple of drops of water in there, we'll try that. A bit more there, look. Then test that. Ah, now that's better. That is what we're looking for. Switching to my size 6 brush, I'm going to wet the iris first of all. Now be careful of this area, if it's still damp, give it a quick blast with a hairdryer or something like that. From a distance, keep waving that hairdryer back and forth. Whilst you'll end up kind of roasting that paper there, you don't want to burn the paper. So wet around the area first of all. This is actually quite dry now. Dried really quick. That's because I've gone wet on dry. In other words, wet paints, of course, it's wet. 
<laughs> on dry paper. That's all I've done there. Probably a couple of times. Allow each layer of water to soak into the paper. And while that's soaking in, I'm going to get another colour mixed up, you know. I think I will. That's going to be yellow. Pardon? Hello, yellow, yellow, yellow. When you look to the left-hand side of the eye, you can see there's just a hint of green there, isn't there? There really is. So, I'll get my mixing brush again. And we'll grab a little bit of what's left of it, lemon yellow. They call me lemon yellow. A little bit of that in there. Grab some round blue. Oh, it's nearly gone green in there, look. Wash your brush out, Paul. Do it properly. A little bit of blue in there. And that's more or less like a, a dull green, isn't it? Look at that. And that will be ideal for that left-hand side there. Just add a bit of colour in there, really. Right, so that's soaked in really nicely now. That's two layers of water. I can see the texture of the paper just kind of shining through there, which is quite nice. Perfect, ideal. And what I'm going to do is get out a grey-blue colour and just drop that in to the background first of all. Now, you don't want it too dark at all. So just be careful with that. Don't go too rich with colours to begin with. Remember, what we're going to be doing throughout the stages here is actually building up the layers of colours. And every layer we add, even if it's the same kind of weak wash as that, will get kind of richer and richer in tone as we go along. It really will. But for the background, for the iris area here, we just don't need a great deal of colour there, do we? As we know, it's quite dull. A bit like me, really. Ain't bad. Who said that? Then grab our yellow, our greeny yellow. Just remember the lemon yellow and a little bit of this mixture of the cerulean blue and the paint grey. Drop it into that left hand side there, just a touch of it like that one. Let it blend, let it flood into the rest of that paint. In fact, I might just drop in, yes, a touch, into it round there as well. And that it's the first layer of wash on, as simple as that. Now all six eyes are dry, so I want to work on the second one now. And what we've got to look at, when we look at the iris, all this area here, divides in two, doesn't it, around this area here, doesn't it? Bit of a curve coming around. So let's just work on the inner edge first of all, to kind of get some detail in there. Let's go back to our cerulean blue and the paint grey. And start to add in just a few extra layers here and there of the colour here. In fact, I'm only going to do, I'm going to get a little bit more sort of paint grey in there as well. Just to dull that down just a touch. Take some of that paint off. Then using the side of the brush, the side of the brush, scumble. That's all I'm doing, scumbling. Quite a nice word, that scumble, isn't it? I like that word. This is going to add some texture within this part of the iris. Just here, very light though, very light. That's plenty from that area now. We'll soften that down in a minute. Then the same as you work around here, but less so. So just a hint of kind of different markings here and there around these areas, can't you? It's around there and then working your way down. This needs to remain very pale, doesn't it? Touch more of our Paint's grey. Just a touch, tap some off. A little bit more within there. In fact, I can actually migrate over to this side a little bit more if I wanted to. Because we'll be covering some of that up anyway very shortly. Or we'll cover all that up very shortly. Back to your size 6 brush. Grab some kitchen roll. Give it a fold or two, like that. Kind of. So I tend to fold my kitchen roll. Quite handy that size. Then take some of that water off, so it's hardly any water on that brush, but just enough, just a little bit. Then using the size of the brush, you see how dry it is because the bristles are parting from bit of that. And very lightly, very lightly, just tease that paint and soften it down without blending it too much. See what I mean? That's all I'm doing there. Just knocking it back. Give it a wash, give it a rinse, dirty water, then clean water. Give it a dry or two, anything you've got in your hand. Then do the same again, using the side of the brush. Something like that should do. Actually, what I might do, you know, now this is nice and damp, let's get a little bit more of that colour again. Again, touch more paint grey in there. Just a touch, just in one corner. 
takes them off. And then the outer edge of the eye here, look, just have this darker mix, slightly darker mix, not that much darker really. And add it in, just that very edge there, look. See what I mean? Just there. Oh, that is definitely darker. We do need to go very dark round there anyway, we know we do. But what I want is a gradual kind of feel where it's going to get slightly lighter as it was just way across here. A few little marks here and there as well. And again, we'll soften that in there. So it's not all the same. Don't want any harsh lines in this area. It needs to be really, really soft, remember. So size six or your size double zero, whichever one you want to use. A clean damp brush and just soften that back. That will do. We'll go over the top of that with our darker colour later on, but a weakened version of our dark colour when I make it up in a bit. Okay, everything's nice and dry, so let's work on number three. Now this is going to be for the inner area of the iris, so we've got this half there, look. It's going to be this inside edge here, all the way around. Now when you look close in that reference photograph, you can see there's a lot of green in there, isn't like a sort of greeny blue. So very much the same as the colours we've already used in here, really. So first things first, get some of our yellow, it's nearly dried in there already. Then add this in onto the dry paper initially. Look. Don't need to wet it, don't think in this case. Just around there, it's really intense, isn't it? Now? Just a tiny amount on this side. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then a little bit of phthalo, phthalo blue, or intense blue, or Windsor blue. Anything like that, just drop this in to the inner edge, right on the very outside edge of the pupil there. Just add that blast blue there, it's still going to be a bit greeny. Give it a gentle blend, clean, damp brush. Wash it in the dirty, then in the clean. Then tiny, tiny circles just to blend that out on the outside edge, though. Not the inside edge, of course, just the outside edge. It's a nice bright colour there, look at that, oh yeah. And that's perfect for adding details over the top of that. I'll quickly do the same thing on the other three eyes as well. Now when you look at the inner part of the iris, that's quite a bluey, greeny, sort of grey colour isn't it? A little bit of green but not much, so tell me what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for the same colour again, so the cerulean blue, pop that in there. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker, so instead of wall tree, Think about it being more of a milky consistency. So we've got watery, milky, creamy, and then thick. I can't do that. Thick, there you go. Then the paint's grey. And we'll decide if we need to add some of that yellow in there as well yet. I'm not sure. A little bit more paint's grey in there, maybe. Just to darken it down, just a touch more now. And back to your size double zero brush. This is the part I really enjoy when I start building up the details on there. Okay, here we go. E right. Starting off, probably about halfway maybe, probably around there. Yeah, I'd say about there. Look at the curvature of this as well. The way it curves around, follows the contour of that pupil there. Look. So you're going to do the same sort of curve there. But don't draw a line, okay? What I'm going to do, I'm going to tap a line. Just tap it around, think of the curve again. Think of the natural curve or kind of arc of your wrist when you're doing this. I know I'm left-handed, but you can do this right-handed as well. If you find it difficult to get the curve if you're right-handed, if you're doing it this way, I'll find it difficult that way. Then turn your paper around and then turn the photograph around as well. And try it that way around, you'll find it a little bit easier. Just tap it in. Always be careful, don't go too mad with it. So let's start building this up bit by bit, just by scumbling and stippling. From this contour around, it just kind of stops shy of the bottom here, doesn't it? The lower eyelid, just around there. Again, tap it, don't draw a line or paint a line there. And it sort of disappears around the left-hand side, doesn't it? Just tiny, tiny marks here and there. All we need to do is gradually build it up bit by bit. And I mentioned this is really dark in there, so you don't have to go too detailed at all with it. Because you can't see any detail in there. Not at all. So you literally fill that in. Then gradually start to work from your stippling marks as you work your way around. Because you can see it's darker all the way around here and gradually gets lighter from probably about seven o'clock on the clock face around there. 
There's not the centre of the clock there. I got seven o'clock coming down, so probably around there, it starts to gradually get lighter, and paler. Just a few odd marks here and there around this area. Don't forget to leave a few gaps in between as well. It's not all the same colour, you know. Right, so I'm going to add some more detail on there. Don't rush it. Take your time. You should never, ever rush a painting. Depends a bit spontaneous or not. <laughs> Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my size ticks now. Take most of the water off. Then very light and soften it using the side of the brush. Again, watch out for those water runs on there. It's just the side of the brush, tiny circles, that's all I'm doing here, like. Now this outside edge of this inner ring, if you wish, I've got to soften that down as well. Just a little bit though, not too much. You still want to be able to see the details in there, but again, you're just knocking them back just a tiny amount. Rinse the brush out, do the same again. If you don't keep rinsing that brush out, you'll be transferring paint from one place to another. You want to maintain the clarity of the colour, don't you, really, within there. So I'm really doing my best to do it here for you. Keep it nice and clean. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Something like that. That's looking better, isn't it? Much, much better. So now we've got a sort of an inner ring in there. I'm going to let that dry. I'll give it a quick blast for the air dry, and we'll go over the top of that with some more detail as well. Okay, that's nice and dry. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Same colour, see how it's separated in there, love? I know, it does it all the time. <laughs> a little bit of paint's grey in there, just in one corner. Just to dumb it down, darken it as well a little bit. Not too dark, though. You can add some extra little details in there now, just over the top of this layer. Remember, every layer of detail that we put on there will give an impression of a deeper feel to it. The same applies when we work on fur as well. You know, so the more layers we use, the deeper it will look. A little bit more now, just below the eye here. I can just see it's slightly darker around there. Now, sometimes it's wise to have your reference photograph the same size. If you squeeze that photograph down a little bit, same size as your painting here, you can see that, well, you know, some of the details that you see when you're zoomed in, you don't necessarily need to paint. A little tip for you there. So you might always paint all those details that you can see in that photograph because you need to kind of view the photograph at the same size as your painting. <laughs> Let's get some of that phalo blue a minute. It's still quite watery there, that at the moment. I'm going to just paint in a few odd lines, little flecks coming away from that central circle. Remember, remember the centre of the circles here, think of the clock face again, then pull out a few little lines here and there, not many though. And then the same on the other side. And go back to your mixture of the cerulean blue and the paint grey with that little bit of lemon yellow in there. Do the same again with that one. Just add a few extra details around that pupil and the edge of the pupil here. So this is really the mid-tone layer. That's what we're looking at here, isn't it? And all these areas here don't need to go much darker than they are. They really don't. So I think that will do for this layer now. Even though this tutorial is about painting the eye, we need a little bit of fur there just to kind of make it stand out, don't we? So to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some raw sienna, and also, looking at the colours, maybe a touch, only a touch though, of burnt umber. Now that's okay for the darker areas, isn't it? The kind of deeper tones. I want something a little bit paler than that. So if I water this down, there's that brush out in it, a bit of clean water in there, and then thin that out. Get a nice kind of gentle wash of that. Look at that. That's lovely. Really nice. Then apply the water around the eye. Grab some of the colour. Oh, wrong one. Oh, need a watery one first of all. Drop it onto the paper. Now it's quite pale there, but I should what I'm going to do in a minute. Bear with me, bear with me. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> You're right. No, I do. I do. And then apply this down the bottom as well. It's going to blend this out to the whites of the paper just around the edge there. Near enough anyway, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then we go for the slightly stronger mix. That's really watery. This is still watery, but a little bit more pigment in there. And we can add that in as well. Just in place, just to vary the tonal value. God, that sounds complicated. Just to vary the way it looks, vary the colour. <laughs> Take most of that water off that brush, okay? And then lift off a little bit of paint 
for example here a slight highlighted area there just want a bit of colour on the paper really just to tint the paper that's all we've done there clean the brush off again and then do the same below the eye just remove a little bit of paint there I know that quick but I'm going to carry on with this one very shortly after giving a quick blast with the hair dryer then between us we'll add the details over the top of this okay I'd like to get just a basic indication here of fur. Here we go, nice and dry, or well, just about anyway. Size double zero brush. I'm going to go to the same mix for now, the thicker version of the two, even though it's still water as I mentioned. I'm going to start to add in some very basic light pale, very pale, details. And I don't even notice you know when I drew this out. I've actually put some little lines in place so I can know the direction all the fur grows. Or goes. So by doing that, it kind of keeps you on, on track really when you start to add the details over the top. If you haven't already done that, what you need to do, just put a few indications the direction the fur goes around the top of the eye and obviously underneath all the way around the eye really. So there's a few to begin with. And then you can see it changes direction to probably this area here more towards 10 o'clock direction, doesn't it? It's around there. Just put a few odd ones in. And this area here, Aims towards probably two o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, yeah, something like that. Just around there, just a few odd ones, and it kind of switches around there. Kind of fans out like that, doesn't it, around that area there. Overlap the lines, even though they're going in this sort of direction. Overlap them. So it's slightly elongated. So what do I mean by that, Bob? Show you what I mean. When you're doing a line like that, don't keep them parallel to one another all the time. Because then it looks too, well, too combed, doesn't it? It really does. So what you want to do every now and then, just slightly overlap them. So elongated crosses is all I'm looking for. So if I just do one like that and one like that, that sort of thing. But in this case, they're curved, aren't they? And that's how I tend to work on fur. And also, believe it or not, feathers to a certain degree. But I'm going to carry on, just fill this in a little bit more. I'll come back to you and we'll add a little bit more colour into this. And also some depth in there as well. Now then, colour-wise, I'm looking for probably something a little bit deeper in colour now, I've got all these details on. Just the first layer of fur, that's all it is. What I'm going to go for, the same sort of mix again, I might use, I'm going to use a new well actually, I'm going to use a new mixing well. Let's go again for the raw sienna. But for now, just have it more of a milky consistency. So a little bit thicker than water, okay, think about it that way. Burnt umber, same mix again, that's all it is. But, there's always a but, I might put an additional colour in there as well. Because that's quite a nice colour, isn't it? It really is. That's a double mix so far. And I think that on its own will probably work really, really well. But I'm going to go for some burnt sienna as well. There we go. That's nearly run out again in there, isn't it? I'll have to get another one of those in there in a bit. Believe it or not, that will last quite some time, what's left in there. <laughs> you wouldn't think it, would you? That just warms it up a little bit more in there, doesn't it? We'll use that one now. Okay, let's try that one. Lower the brush, give it a roll, give it a tap or two, and then look for those areas which are deeper in tone now. So just above the eye here, a little bit of that in there. You find when you start working on fur around, for example, a cat's eye, or any fur in question, really, is that the more layers you put on, the fewer lines you'll need. And that's because you want those lines or that layer underneath to show through. Otherwise you'll end up covering it all up again, won't you? So basically you need fewer marks, that's it really. A little bit richer around there. And maybe just a touch here and there around this side as well. You don't need a lot of this. And then down the side, where we've got the gap. So all the hairs change direction down here, don't they? A bit of a gap in between. And then down the back here as well. So again, don't add too much of this in. You want to maintain the lighter areas, really. And take your time, there's no rush. This time we're going to go for a little bit of burnt umber. And a small amount of lamp black. Or paint grey or something like that. Just to dull that brown down. Dull the brown down. <laughs> Touch more. That's quite a dark brown. Again, this is more of a milky consistency. Now, size double zero brush again. Start to add in this 
Well, more of a duller colour. And also darker. Look at that one. Look at the way that's dark in that area down. But like I said earlier on, make sure you allow some of those old lines to show through. Otherwise you end up covering everything up and you don't want to do that really. No, 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 no. You certainly don't. A few of these now within this whiter area. Now you could use more of a Payne's Grey version than that. So I think that's more or less what it actually is. But I'm going to go with this colour. Just enter that. But make sure there's hardly any paint on that brush. I've just got rid of most of the paint just doing that. Which allows me now to come down to a lighter area and add those final lines because this brush isn't overloaded. I'm going to flick up a few little lines down here as well. Again with a barely loaded brush. Look at the direction these lines go in. But then carry on working away around the eye within the third, looking for any darker areas. Now, we know there aren't that many really dark areas. But there's a few. There's a few knocking about. So we can start to get darker down here. And what you need to do, once you've done this layer, I'll do the same on that one so I don't get rid of the colour, is just add a little bit more lamp black in there or paint grey, just to darken just a little bit more. Then use more of a kind of darker, duller colour. So it's not quite as colourful within this area. And also any other areas that you can see that needs to be a little bit darker than the fur. Well, let's steal a little bit of that. I'll put in that one a minute. Grab some lamp black. Put that in there so it's really dark. I'm going to use that one for those really, really dark areas. So you don't need much of this at all. You really don't. Just a few around this area here. Quite dark in that little area there, isn't it? And then down here as well, just a touch. Again, ignore the eye just yet. I know it's so tempting, isn't it? Kind of paint the eye, it really is. Just ignore it for a minute. It won't be long before we get there anyway. So Indian red, trust me on this. And some burnt umber. To milky consistency. And use that around here. Now I've just started painting this one. I just realised I'm not putting any colour in here yet, so we need to add this in. A little bit of colour there, tap it in. We'll get some detail over that once it's dry, so I'll come back to you in a minute, okay? Now you can see it's quite light in the middle, but it's still quite a well, dull brown, isn't it? So what you can do, get some of your black colour there, look. The other one now, the burnt some of the lap black. We can add a little bit of that in there now. Just sort of semi-blend it together a little bit. Don't make it too dark. It's dark in here, but not there. Honest. Then it's going to go around to there where it's really dark inside. Saying that's dark inside, but I can still see some colour in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab some raw, lovely, rich colour. A bit more in there. Just around the very edges. Like that. And I'm going to put some of this inside here now. Just want to wait for these two to dry. Blend that out. Maybe, maybe, maybe somewhere like that. Yeah, that should do. The lip around black brown colour. Take all this in there as well. This is actually darker than there, isn't it, on the photograph? Take all this in. You can just see where it's lighter just on this end here, isn't it? But we'll darken this in when we start painting the eye. Just want to get some colour behind the scenes, really. Right, I'm going to carry on and do the other two now. <laughs> and now I enjoy doing this. It's good fun, isn't it? It really is good fun. Well, we have three nearly identical eyes going on there. Hello. Let's go to number five. Now, number five is where we start to add that contrast within the eye. And this is where we add the darkest colour. And I mean the darkest of dogs, okay? Now, we need a black for that. I'm going to go for a alizarin crimson. I want to make this mix creamy. We've had watery, we've had, hang on, we've had watery, we've had milky, and now we're going to go for creamy. Not thick, don't want thick. So less water, more pigment is what you're looking at. So a alizarin crimson. If you are interested in mixing different colour blacks, I've got a video here on how to make that. I'll pop a link to the top right hand corner for you, okay? And I'm going to go for the phthalo green. Now, phthalo green, which I believe is this one here. There you go. Yeah, of course it is. You ready for this? A bit more. Oh, 
Pop that in and look at that. <laughs> That's more like a deep purple at the moment, isn't it? I know, good group, but it's more like a deep purple. So I'm going to wash that brush out again. Get a clean brush before you go back into that colour. Fill the green again. Add that in one more time. Let's have a look. No, look at that. Now that's a very rich colour, isn't it? A lovely clean black. So just kind of warm it up a little bit more. Now here we go, black. Let's go around the outside of the socket first of all. Or the inside of the fur line. So add this line in. Be very careful as you do this. Try and keep it a nice smooth curve all the way around. Okay. Try not to load that brush too much. I mean, you want a little bit more paint on your brush this time around, but not too much. Then that'll come down to about there. Like that. And then the same on the other side. I'm going to put a thin line down here initially, so I can just kind of work out where things go. And then just a little bit of a bump going on there. Then fill that area in just so much. You don't want to fill this all in, actually. Probably it's about there. I can just make out a small highlighted area just inside the eye. It's not bright. And just work it out there. Now we have got a highlight in here. You can always try to observe the white of the paper if you want to. Then paint on the inside now. And the edge of the iris. That gentle curve, remember, that's what you're looking for there. because there was some little white of the paper there as well. Only a little bit, not too much. So move your body around to get a nice curved angle like that. Fill this in. And then the same on the other side. And then the lower part of the eye. Now the other thing is with this, I want to get the natural curve of my hand, so I'm going to move the paper around. Excuse my anti-slip mat there, it's quite handy stuff. Move that around that way around, so now it's upside down. Now also do the same with your reference photograph. I want to do this off camera in a minute. It's very lively. Load the brush up, give it a roll, give it a couple of taps. And then start to add in the lower eyelid line, this dark line we can see. It's not very thick, is it? New, 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 it's not. And it actually cuts across just about there looking at it. That's where you need to concentrate as well. Concentrate. And this is more or less like a double line here. Just about, anyway, not quite. Be very tentative to begin with. Think about that gentle curve all the time. It needs to be really dark as well in there. So I need to go over the same area again. To darken that line down. All the way around. To there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and while you got it upside down, flick out a few tiny, tiny marks here. Take some paint off that brush off. It's a few tiny, tiny marks away from the eye to so take away this hard line around the edge here. Break it up. Do the way around now. And this is where you can start to fiddle and fine tune it a little bit. Now, if you fiddle too much, and you don't see an improvement or anything like that, then that's when you want to stop at this stage for this dark area around the eye. We can start working inside that eye, can't we? But you can't wait to start that bit. I know, I know, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. And that's coming next. I need this to fade, or this area here, because we haven't got a sharp line there, have we? On the reference photograph. So to do that, we're going to have to do, get some water on the brush and just kind of shake it off once. Don't tell anybody it's gone on the carpet. In my case, it has. 
then add a thin layer of water. Not too much, too much water on the brush there, Paul. Behave yourself, lad. Just around there, okay. Grab some black, our dark colour now. <laughs> there we go. Add that over the top. Don't go too much with it. Not too much. And now it's a blend into that water. And you can see it's starting to blend in with the rest of the kind of area above the eye now. Very carefully. Now whilst that's drying, let's work on the pupil. Oh, here we go. Now, the first thing I want to do is paint around the outside edge of the pupil. I'm going to go a bit shy of the outside line to begin with. Not because I am shy, well, I probably am a little bit. But because of the fact that if I make an error on the shape, I've got room to adjust it, if you know what I mean. So I can just play around with that shape then, just by going a little bit shy of that edge. They can widen it afterwards, can't you? Just to there. Think about the shape that we can see within that eye. And it looks like a structure, doesn't it? Like a top of a roof or something like that. I think it probably is, actually. And you can see the struts of the windows here. Okay, start to fill it in. This way you can just make sure that you've got the shape about right before you start to widen it slightly. Okay, and we've got that coming down there. We've got a bit of a window there. Have you noticed as well that the pupil is not vertical, is it? It's something like that, isn't it? So bear that in mind when you're painting it. To get fine lines, you need less paint on that brush. And also a finer brush as well. But, there's always a but, I know. But, you can get fine lines as well with a big brush. You know, a bigger brush, not a massive brush. And that depends on the tip of that brush, it really does. Look at the photograph and paint in that structure. Well, as you can see, just by these finer details in for the pupil, that's made a humongous difference, hasn't it? Really has. What a massive difference that's made. And now it's starting to look quite lifelike, isn't it? However, we haven't got another stage to go yet. We have. We're going to brighten up these highlights. Yes, you can reserve the white of the paper a little bit more. But I like to use watercolour white. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the same thing now on this one. And I'll be back with you literally in a few seconds. And I'll show you how to add the highlights in there as well. And also, a little bit about using watercolour white. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, well that's the last eye painted, but what we need is a little bit of a highlight in there. And that's by using, as I said earlier on, what's colour white. Now whatever white you've got needs to be opaque. So you can use white gouache if you want to use that instead, that's fine. And I've got a link down below for my materials list on the different white paints which you can buy. So just have a look at that as well if you're not sure. A little bit of water down below there. And grab a tiny amount of water. Take some of that water off the side of my metal ferrule again. Turn around to water, and then you can weaken that to whatever strength you want it to be. Now you want this really creamy. The thinner the white is, the duller it will dry. So bear that in mind, okay? So if you want it really, really bright, then you need to make sure that it's nearly, well, nearly thick, not quite thick. So a little bit of a highlight just in here now. I can see from the reference photograph, this is actually just still blue, isn't it? I want to get some white in there to make it really stand out. Just a hint of white here and there, within the eye. And I just want to see what else I want to put this with. Maybe a little bit around there. Put too much in, you take away all that blue. You can always add colour over the top of the white once it's dry. A little bit of white in there. And a few little sparkles around here as well. Just a few odd ones like that. You can barely see them, but they are there. They are there. It adds extra interest to that eye, it really does. And even probably just a touch down there as well. Other than that, have a look at the fur. Again, nice and creamy. It's got to be paintable. If it's too thick, you won't be able to paint a line with it. And this can be used for any areas where we didn't reserve the white of the paper, which of my style, I tend not to do very much. But 
but I'm not a traditionalist as you know. And this can go in the white areas that we've got here. So we've got one just there. Then add this in for the eyebrow. Just a few odd ones here and there. You can barely see a lot. Now this will fade as it dries. And as I said earlier, it can go duller. And that, I dare say, is it. Now if you do want to learn a little bit more about painting eyes, I've got a video to the top right hand corner for you. Hopefully, I'll see you there.